it's a beautiful day outside, but we're not there today because today's the day I finally start doing the inside stuff. Uh, I've kind of been dreading this because I'm a novice at uh, setting up these electrical centrals, but you know, you do what you gotta do. Uh, so today I've mounted this one as well as the one uh, in the basement and we're just kind of working uh, for starters. I've done the most important thing and we've got our potential equalization ground uh, lead uh, that's going straight down uh, to uh, the trench. So we have good ground here, uh, better ground than we actually have there because this just goes out to the electrical grid and God knows where the next a ground point from that pole is probably not close. Uh, so this is going to get uh, equalized with the potential in here once we get the proper electricians here and uh, uh, I, we get to work on this because it's live and I'm not allowed to. Uh, so uh, this is going to be the main transfer switch for choosing uh, uh, what the house is going to be powered on. So it's got three modes, it's got setting one, off, and setting two. So I, uh, the output of this thing is going to be uh, all the outputs of the central. It's going to go to the three metal rails uh, for the three phases, uh, and uh, the output of the switch is going to go to each of these. So that's just going to be uh, three conductors going straight down to this. And uh, the two inputs on this uh, switch uh, is uh, gonna go to one, it's gonna go straight to the main uh, fuses. Uh, so if we have it, uh, uh, that's gonna be mode two. If we have it to mode two, we're gonna have a circuit straight from here through the switch and uh, back out there, uh, i.e. bypass mode. It's exactly the same thing as we have right now. Main fuses straight to face uh, bars in there. However, if we put it to mode one, uh, now, the input is going to go uh, to the output from the inverter that uh, is going to come up from here. So it's going to go uh, first down all the way, then back up and into this and out there. So then we are in uh, uh, inverter mode, uh, off grid mode or grid time mode, however I choose to configure it. Uh, so the reason for having this switch at all is uh, my inverter is cheap and uh, it's probably going to break at some point couple of thunderstorms so so forth. So if I wake up in the middle of the night and notice something's gone wrong, I can just do that. And as long as it's not a big storm outside that's uh, torn the power lines down, I'm going to have a house powered straight from the grid and I don't have to care about uh, any outages relating to my inverter being broken. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, this is going to be the uh, breaker for the free phase outlet I'm going to put uh, uh, right there because I want a free phase outlet just because testing stuff, it's it's very useful. Also, if I want to share power with my neighbors in case of a prolonged power outage, hey, good to have a free phase power outlet. Uh, might as well put it in since we're doing all this work. It's a trivial cost. Uh, so that's as far as we've gone here. Uh, oh yeah, and I did pull a new uh, tube here for uh, only my gra ground uh, potential equalization, a uh, raw copper lead. So let's uh, head on downstairs and see what's happened there. So uh, for starters, we have uh, uh, we have our uh, rail mounted all the way where it needs to go. And uh, uh, the new potential equalization uh, cable running. Uh, that, uh, this uh, is uh, a lovely creation I figured out. Uh, here is as far as the actual dog down wire goes. So this literal cable keeps on going out through the wall and into the ground. Uh, and uh, I need to extend it. So I found some 15 mil copper pipe and uh, a big crimp tool, and I just uh, crimped this uh, copper copper wire with uh, uh, a copper tube, and uh, that's on there very, very well. Crimping this was very difficult, and <laughs> that's not gonna go anywhere. I'm very happy about that. For start the first time around, I just had a couple of hose clamps here, 
and I was going to solder it, but I didn't really like that. That's a much neater solution. Uh, so, more of the same here, just nothing new, but here it starts to get a bit interesting. So I have the other central and the safety isolation switch for the inverter installed. Uh, I've also got the uh, grounding wire going into this one. Curiously, these two centrals, while identical, are not identical. This one has neutral to the left and ground to the right. If the other one has ground to the left and neutral to the right, huh, who knows? You, you usually tie them together anyway, so it doesn't really matter, but I had to double check that I really did this right because it's on the other side. But oh well. So this has the uh, safety conductor just coming in there and up here we have a bit of an ugly splice uh, this is basically uh, what the one we just looked at was gonna be so I have a couple of hose clamps here and I've soldered it as well so this is clamped down in two places and soldered in two places so this is it's not gonna fail it's uh, gonna stay very conductive no matter what uh, and uh, here, of course, it just goes straight out underground. So, we probably have better ground than this house has ever seen by now. Yeah, so, uh, the plan moving forward is I'm going to populate this central. Soon enough, I have another one of these uh, uh, free mode switch over switches. Come on. Yeah, which is going to go somewhere in here, the rails aren't actually mounted properly, but it's going to be somewhere in there, and this one is going to be the selector for uh, inverter power or mains power for the heat pump and the barn, uh, because uh, the free is uh, the free mode selector switch up top, uh, since it goes straight to uh, the old central uh, and the barn is actually not going to be hooked up to that, the barn, uh, this cable, uh, is going to be hooked up to this central with its own uh, 10 amp breaker. Uh, so we're not going to be able to bring the, choose whether or not the barn is uh, on grid or off grid uh, with the top selector switch because it doesn't do anything down here at all. Uh, but we, st uh, we still need to have this one because I want to be able to choose whether or not the super power hungry uh, heat pump uh, runs uh, on the inverter uh, off grid uh, side or the on grid side and uh, this is going to be a very clever solution for, uh, the, uh, for when we run in uh, feedback mode into the grid because if I have uh, this uh, pump connected to the uh, grid side of everything uh, so it's not usually running off of the solar panels like the rest of the house uh, if we have excess power uh, that the inverter is feeding uh, back into the grid uh, well the pump is still going to be the closest load to the inverter so any current it's putting out, and if, if the pump is on and running, it's going to go straight into the pump before it goes into the power meter upstairs. Uh, so this basically turns this into an excess uh, excess power accumulator. Uh, I don't think it has like an enable input that would force it on when we're feeding back power, but uh, it's, it's going to let me run this like without draining the batteries and I can still get free power from the solar panels into it during the day and that that's going to be a good compromise I, I really like the ability to uh, do that uh, but yeah it's, it's all going to be a bit more uh, clear once we have everything hooked up we also have a free phase 16 amp breaker for the heat pump that's going to go somewhere in there as well. Poof! Suddenly wiring. So I've uh, spent the last uh, few days uh, just uh, getting all the mains wiring installed and we're really starting to get somewhere. And uh, boy do we have <laughs> a bit of a mess going on here. Uh, so uh, let's have a look at what's going on. Uh, so the black 
uh, cables are for the inverter. They go straight into the plugs uh, on the back of the MPP solar inverter. Uh, and I've had to use this uh, fancy black flex cable. Yeah, that's like super fancy, expensive, industrial, like welder cable. Set me back a fortune. Uh, to wire this up because uh, you can't really use the hard uh, common mains wiring. It just has too few strands. It would uh, not be able to get bent in the proper way to allow these connectors to uh, perform their duties because this ca these can be disconnected uh, quite easily. Uh, I'm not going to do it because it's going to screw up my routing here, but uh, if we were to try to disconnect these with a white cable, uh, they just kind of stay here no matter what, and uh, if we wouldn't be able to get them off of that really plastically bending. Uh, the cable and that's just not fine because you'd be able to do that five times and then you would be damaging the cable. Uh, so we have a plastic, uh, we have fancy flex cable there uh, for longevity. Ah, beautiful. <laughs> kind of looks like the battery cables just continuing on forever. Uh, but uh, these can go uh, over here. Uh, this one is the mains input to the inverter, which is going through the safety switch and this is required uh, by regulation. You have to be able to cut the primary side of the inverter uh, for servicing in case of malfunction, something like that. Uh, so that now this is safe to work with as far as the power grid is concerned. Uh, the other one is just going straight from the inverter over here and it's going to be going into the uh, changeover switch. So let's see what we have. So. These two run upstairs, straight upstairs all the way, and uh, it's going to be, this is the inverter output, so this is going to be, I think I haven't quite figured all of this out yet, this, this is probably going to end up being the inverter output going upstairs, and this is the inverter input, and this is going to be the power grid, and these are all going to get uh, hooked up two and two up on top of this switch. So we're ha gonna have inverter output and uh, inverter output feed up uh, upstairs going together and a grid and uh, inverter power supply going uh, together up top here. So it's just gonna be uh, two of these. Well, not those two because we're both going to the inverter. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're gonna go together there and then we're gonna have some space left here for uh, the uh, uh, three phase uh, breaker for uh, the heat pump. Uh, so, uh, more stuff has happened aside from our uh, two 5x6 uh, square mil cables getting uh, completely rated. I have done something I'm reasonably proud of uh, with the grinding uh, because I wanted to tie this into the uh, these uh, cages properly because these are, have quite a bit of metal in them. They're about a hundred square mil uh, cross-sectional area in total and uh, if uh, I get a bunch of these uh, wire clamps and uh, make sure I clamp these down in strategic locations uh, I can get a lot of free grinding uh, conductor out of this. Uh, so what I've done is I've taken one of these uh, uh, wire clamps which just go on really hard and I've put one in each end of every piece of uh, a wiring channel. What do we call these wire ladders? It's confusing. Uh, so we, we are connecting our ground in parallel with this over here. Then we're going in parallel and hook up again over here. And this here goes in parallel there. And they go in parallel all the way over there. And, uh, uh, I've calculated the resistance of this uh, uh, um, caging stuff. Uh, by doing it this way, I'm basically doubling my available uh, ground. Uh, I'm, uh, no, no, I'm halving my ground resistance because uh, uh, this roughly translates to 19 square mils of copper. So, uh, well, we can't like say that we have twice as much. 
in practice, uh, we're gonna get a better grinding out of it. And, you know, you can never have too much grind. And also have a few of these uh, metal mounts just uh, every here and there along the way to make sure everything's hooked up properly. Getting that one over that on was a bother. Uh, but all of our, our so big power wiring is uh, tied down. You can see more of my clips there. Another one there. One right there by the crimp because it's uh, pretty much in the beginning of that ladder. More clips, zip ties, clips, zip ties, clips, zip ties. Just to keep everything together. And if we follow this all the way, it's even going with a lot of zip ties at the end, uh, up through the floor to the upstairs where we're just about to begin wiring up the central over there as well. And of course we have another ground clip, right, clip clamp, just clamping it down right at the end of that. So this entire piece of metal is also our ground conductor. Beautiful. Uh, so on the other side of the floor, uh, nothing's really is taken too much shape, uh, aside from uh, me using a million clamps to uh, tie the, these to the wall. Uh, clamps don't really work too well on this wall because it's basically made out of cardboard. But you know, you use enough of them, it'll it'll stick there. This is all covered up anyway, so it doesn't even matter if it falls off, as long as it doesn't like collapse completely. Uh, and. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna strip and wire this up soon enough. I'm still waiting for delivery on my ground fault interrupter, which is gonna go somewhere here. And that's kind of super important because everything is gonna go through that. Uh, the ground fault interrupter is gonna be between the inverter, in well, between this switch and uh, the main fuses. So it's, it's like our main input. And without that, I can't, uh, really arrange and wire everything up properly. Uh, I really need to see what pin out it has. I don't even, I don't even know what model I'm gonna get. I don't, I don't know the documentation. I can't just like look up what it is and like put one of these there and pretend that's my grand fault interrupter. Uh, I'm in a bit of a stick. But I can wire everything that's on the secondary side of this up. So we can wire our uh, these guys up, we can wire the free phase breaker for the free phase outlet up. So it's it's not all bad, but it, it's a bit of a bother. I'm missing a part, really need that part, but oh well. You may do, there's, there's plenty of work to do anyway. And plenty of work has been done. And we're pretty much done with the downstairs central now. There's just a few tiny bits of a, a clean up left to do, like uh, making this into a traditional wired outlet rather than one of these new fancy wireless types. Uh, so let's have a look at uh, what's going on. Uh, so we have the cover off of the transfer switch, so uh, now you can very easily see this is just two normal uh, mains uh, breaker switches, uh, four poles with neutral and three faces. Uh, with a plastic like mechanical linkage on top to turn it into a, a generator transfer. Uh, and uh, I have labelled a wiring, so let's see if I remember what's going on. Uh, so this is one that's normally going to be engaged, so on this we have the flex cable here, that's uh, the output from the inverter, uh, this guy here. Uh, so this is going to go into the switch and uh, uh, the other uh, cable going to the top of the switch is uh, going uh, upstairs. So this is going to be, uh, this is just linking through to the main power cable that's going to power most of the house. And uh, the, this one goes on uh, straight to the upstairs central and uh, onwards to the fuses powering everything. Uh, on the other side of that, uh, it's linked to the other switch and uh, the output of the entire uh, 
switch over device is going to these uh, breakers. Uh, this is going to be for the heat pump. Uh, it's not word up yet. I need to get some 5 times 2.5 square mil a cable for that. Uh, this one is a 10 amp breaker for the barn. And uh, this one is a 16 amp breaker that's uh, going to go to the outlet over there. And these are on the same face and very tightly linked together. And that's for a reason. Because the barn, I've previously actually had some networking going on there. We're using one of these silly plug adapter things you can get. And this uh, cable actually has some really nice uh, copper shielding all the way. It's uh, pretty hefty stuff. So I think if I, since I'm going to have Ethernet here anyway, put one of the line trans, uh, line Ethernet thingies there, I can get pretty good uh, internet connectivity over in the barn. I can have a little Wi-Fi AP there uh, for convenience and music streaming and what have you. So that's why these guys are just super tightly tied together so I can have my little Ethernet thing there. Uh, for the barn wiring, uh, usually you would uh, strip quite a lot of the actual cable going out and uh, hook the ground up there and the neutral up there. Uh, I chose to do, use a couple of uh, individual uh, connection blocks here just because the ground wire, I, like it has, it, it's such a weird wire this uh, underground stuff. Where's the little piece of chopped off? Ah, there we go. Because they have a ground uh, just kind of uh, wrapped around the outside and uh, it's it doesn't really clean up well when you just take all the individual strands and uh, try to turn it into a single uh, conductor especially not when you're as picky as I am and you want to wrap the foil around it as well so just keep the length to a minimum and kind of keep it contained in this area where there's probably not, never going to be anything else installed. Uh, so that is looking good. I've even done some styling with the proper 9 degree bends of the uh, ground, ca ground cables there. And uh, I have divided up the uh, potential equalization ground conductor here uh, into a few different screws because it's just so much uh, cross-sectional area in total that it won't fit in one or two properly so we have triple redundancy there. Woohoo! So with uh, all of that out of the way we can put the cover back on the switch. Well try to. If it's worse hell is to get off it's probably not going to be any easier getting on. Ah there we go. That's on there. Beautiful.